Hey guys, Joelster here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with this awesome projector. So I finally have my hands on the new uh, retail edition. This is the Vava 4K Ultra Short Roll Laser Projector, which I uh, I already made a lot of videos on this, but what I had was the pre-production unit, which I received it about two years ago, probably. So now I finally received the retail edition. So I'm going to do an unboxing of it. And of course, this is the black model. I was hoping to get the black model available. And yes, they finally did it, guys. I prefer my electronics to be on the black side, on the dark side. But anyways, I'm going to do the unboxing and also explain all the ports and everything. And also a comparison with the white model. So just in case if you prefer the black or white so welcome to the channel guys i hope you enjoyed this video i'm jolster and let's do this so there it is guys i have this angle so you guys can appreciate overall the body of this projector of course the black edition looks beautiful it looks very clean i love how they still have the fabric in the front which is housing the two harman Kardon speakers which by the way they're one of the best sounding or the best speakers there is on a projector and this is nice really nice and then right here on top guys we have of course the power button just in case if you can't find the remote controller you can still power on or off through here here is the lens this is where the laser comes out and these are two sensors that register just in case if someone get closer to the laser it'll shut down the laser temporarily so uh it is very bright so that's why they want you to prevent to get you know hurt from your eyes or vision whatever you can shut those down as well if you don't if you don't want them but it's good to have that option so here we have all the ports of course we have three hdmi ports and one does have ARC support so if you want to connect your sound bar or maybe your sound system receiver This one is the one that you're going to be using here. We have a USB type a and then audio output uh, audio video input SPDF or optical port and also LAN port for your internet although this uh, Projector does support wireless as well Wi-Fi, but if you prefer a faster connection maybe this is the best option for you and of course we have the power port right here there is nothing else to talk about here in the projector but basically that's the body front and rear and top so on each side you'll find these ventilations so basically one inhales cold air in and the other one exhales all the hot air out so make sure you have enough room so your projector doesn't get hot or heat up and then you'll find these knobs. So basically these knobs are to adjust the little legs right here, the front of the projector. Pretty awesome stuff. I usually don't need this, but hey, that is awesome that they include this, right? So I remember on previous videos, some of you guys were asking me if you can ceiling mount this projector. And the simple answer is yes, you can. There are brackets here you can use to ceiling mount but this is designed to have it right here on a tv stand to have it close to you that is the whole point of having an ultra short laser projector but in any case you do have the option for ceiling mount all right guys so here i finally have both units together as you guys can see they're basically the same size same everything except one is black and the other one is white with gray. Which one you like the best? Let me know in the comments below. Here's another shot from the top. You guys can see both units. I really like the black edition. I was looking forward to it. It may actually makes contrast with my TV stand. All right, guys. So out of the box, look at this. This projector looks fantastic. It has beautiful brightness, beautiful colors, and I'm using standard. I'm going to show you my settings right now, what I'm using. But if you just want to play something out of the box, you will get an amazing, amazing picture. Now, like I said, this is 103 inch and, and I have such a small room, so it makes this look so big. It covers almost the whole wall. It's just amazing and very impressive. 
Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that this is a 4K projector, right? But the actual, the native resolution, it's 1080p. Now this achieves 4K via pixel shifting, which is like a DLP chip. So uh, do you notice a big difference between you know, native 4K and pixel shifting 4K? Not really. Honestly, everything looks very, very detailed and sharp. And also it is very colorful. That's what I like about this. So uh, yeah, it's not a big difference between that. But of course, you know, if you have a native 4K laser projector, it's going to look maybe a little sharper, but it's going to cost you like around $10,000. They are so very expensive. This projector sells for about $2,800. And that, that's not it. This is 103 inch. You can actually go up to 150 inch and still have a beautiful, beautiful sharp image. So another thing about having a good screen for this projector, look at this image. This is with the lights off. I'm gonna turn the lights on right now. And look at this image. It'll keep a sharp and beautiful looking image. Also, look at the black levels. So this also depends on the screen or the background that you have. So in my case, this screen, it's sort of like a dark gray screen. So if you have a, a dark scene and you have the ambient light on, you still get some really good deep black levels. So let's turn it off and look at this. I mean, of course, it looks better with the lights off, right? But when you, for some reason, if you have an ambient light, look at this image, you still have a nice, colorful and sharp looking image. Let's turn it back off. Now guys, so here are some other examples with a beautiful, beautiful HDR presentation. Oh, and also another thing I wanted to uh, show you, in order for you to get HDR, you're gonna have to press and hold the button that has a three little bars. So let's press it and hold it. Oh, I got the road controller, hold on. Let's press it and hold it, and then you get this little menu access. So over here, you can also change the image parameter. So this is standard, you can make so your selection right here. You can also choose the brightness. It also has 3D uh, switching, so this is where you switch to different 3D options. HDMI CEC, this is for you to con control your soundbar or other devices with the same remote controller, which is what I'm using right now. I love this. CEC powered off, also shuts off my soundbar as well. And then uh, HDMI 2.0. So here is where you choose that HDMI 2.0, as you guys notice, is on. This way I can get uh, 4K at 60 Hertz as well. So if you want to connect your consoles and you want to play at 4K 60 Hertz, make sure you turn this on. All right, this is very important. Trapezoid correction, this is like the what I showed you earlier. No, actually this is where the, uh, you, connect, you correct your screen. Electric power focus, projector mode, and screen ratio. So projection mode, you can change to different projection modes if you want a front, rear, mirror, ceiling mounting and everything. I will show you that more in depth in just a little bit. I just wanted to show you here where you turn on HDR or 4K60. My God, look how beautiful this looks. Amazing, amazing picture, guys. Trust me, you're not going to regret buying this projector and enjoying this beautiful image. So, I'm a gamer. Of course, I'm going to test my consoles to see how it feels, how is the gameplay, how is the colors, the graphics, man, this looks fantastic. I'm playing Streets of Rage right now on the Xbox One X, and look at this beautiful, colorful gameplay. So now, the big question, of course, how is the input lag, right? I noticed a lot of you guys have been asking me because I tested the uh, white version, and the input lag is not that bad, but it's not the best, to be honest. So, if you're a casual gamer, this shouldn't be any problem to you because the input lag is actually pretty acceptable. But if you're a competitive gamer, then you're probably going to have a problem. You see, multiplayer games like Call of Duty requires a lot of precision, fast response time, and of course, low input lag. And the input lag in this game, it is very high. I don't have the exact numbers, but it's roughly around 100 milliseconds. So that is that is actually pretty high. Oh shoot! Yeah, 
you can definitely feel the movements. They're very slow. They're not precise. So for competitive gaming, this is not a good reliable projector. But look at this image. 100 inch. It looks absolutely fantastic. All right, guys. So finally, we're going to go and check out 3D. So in order for you to change to the proper 3D option, we're going to press the button with the three lines. Press it and hold it, and we're going to go to 3D switching. So uh, the one that works, it's uh, either the top, bottom, or frame encapsulation. So let's try the top, bottom, and it's going to go blank for a little bit. And then the image should go back. But now it's going to be looking a little bit different. It may take some time, a few more seconds probably. And there it is. So now finally you guys can see how 3D looks, but there is this green image all around my screen. So the, the bad thing is that it looks kind of ugly, but once you put on your glasses, the green image goes away. You guys notice that? And it actually looks pretty good. Wow. It looks really, really good. And one thing I like about this is that it is bright. You guys notice? Usually when you uh, turn on 3D, it doesn't get bright. It gets a little bit dimmer. But it does get bright. So 3D is also running at 1080p. So just keep that in mind. So uh, yeah, that is one small issue. Another thing I noticed is that in some uh, other movies... The 3D enhancement or the uh, depth of the 3D, it's too much. So sometimes it is hard to read some, uh, some letters or some uh, dialogue. So that is the only complaint I have this. But in this movie, Avatar actually looks, looks pretty amazing. Uh, another problem that I found that I, I can't really show you, but I did encounter this problem, is that the audio goes away when you're playing the actual movie. So I don't know why that is happening, but uh, yeah, the audio goes away. It works in other languages, maybe Spanish or French, but for some reason in English doesn't work. But uh, hopefully they get that fixed. I didn't have that problem before with the other projector, but this problem with the green screen is also on the other white projector. All right, guys, so in the end, is this projector worth your money? Well, let me tell you, I have been using this projector for around two years already. This is just a new color, the black. But other than that, the white and the black, they're all pretty much the same. So I have been using it without any issues whatsoever. Every time I put it on, I just get my mind blown because it looks so, so beautiful colors. Uh, sharpness uh, everything just works and that is something that is super important well except for the 3d because that is just like some a new update right now right but uh, if you're watching movies if you want to watch videos on YouTube and maybe play some casual gaming this is going to do such a great job you're going to be impressed with this now when it comes down to the operating system let me go real quick because well, it is very basic. It is very simple. The App Store right here, it doesn't offer a lot of uh, good uh, applications. This is Aptoy TV. TV. This is what it's called. Yeah, Aptoy TV. So it's sort of like uh, Android, but it's just like an older version. All these applications, right, that you find here, there's some old apps. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't even work that great. I just wish that instead of using this, they should use the Android 9. I've seen other projectors that use Android 9 as well as TVs. And I think it's one of the best operating system from Android 9.0. So uh, that is my biggest probably complaint about this. But like I said, I'm using my Amazon Fire Stick, a Fire Stick, which by the way, this controller controls the Amazon Fire Stick as well. So I don't have to worry about using another controller. There's also over here file management manager, which uh, you can save some uh, files or some uh, content in your projector memory. It doesn't have a lot of memory, but you can do that as well. You can also have multiple screens, which means that there's also an app uh, from Bava, which connects to your phone. 
the projector to your phone it helps you mirror your phone here which is nice i'm not a big fan of that but you have that option as well and then over here let's go into the settings real quick i want to show you what you have so of course network you have wi-fi as well or you can connect your LAN cable for a faster connection source you can change to different source display this is going to be uh, you can adjust the brightness uh, image parameters so you can change to different uh, picture settings you have the standard the theater colorful sport custom you can customize this of course and of course you can also adjust it right here brightness contrast saturation definition tone color temperature standard right now hdr automatic you can have hdr automatic which is the what i have you can have it off or you can have it on all the time i have an automatic so that way when there's hdr you can access that as well and that's about it for this section keystone correction one thing i love about this projector is how easy to you is to adjust your keystone they offer a four point and also an eight point which is very intuitive very easy to adjust so make sure that when you install your screen you are you're going to be like the closest position to the uh, projector screen but when you when you have the problem just go into the keystone adjustment and make those adjustments real quick right here I have a more in-depth video about this so make sure you check out how to uh, the video I have videos that show you the distance that you need from your projector to the screen and also you know the size the 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 height of the furniture that you need also how to install the screens I have so many uh, videos of information regarding that so make sure you check out that uh, playlist from all the projectors that I have review and also installation and screens all right make sure you check out that playlist I'm going to leave a link electronic power focus this is super easy all you have to do is press left or right and until everything every single square in line look sharp and clean super simple I like this I love having simple things on the projectors and TVs as well projection mode projection mode this is changes to let's say that you want to mirror the image or maybe you want to ceiling mount the projector you have the option over here boot source so this is also something that I use since I don't like the operating system on this projector I uh, use my Amazon Fire Stick so I make sure whenever every time I turn on the projector it'll start with the Amazon Fire Stick so HDMI 1 that's the one uh, port that I'm using refresh rate this is 60 Hertz or you also have the option of 50 Hertz over here in the United States we use 60 Hertz so that's what I have let's go back now over here in sound this is very interesting now the sound you can have the sound from the projection projector it is, which is not bad Harman Kardon sound speakers they actually sound pretty good but I prefer to connect my soundbar. So I have the Nakamichi soundbar. It's a 7.2.4, which sounds impressive. And it also supports Dolby Atmos. But I, I, I was I, I thought it was if I choose digital output to raw, it will get Dolby Atmos. It will you know go through Dolby Atmos, but it doesn't. So if you want to get Dolby Atmos, I will have to connect my Xbox One X directly to the soundbar and then the soundbar through the projector that's the only way I can get Dolby Atmos otherwise it's not going to work so uh, I still have it like this this is how I have this sound so every time I turn on the projector the CEC will turn on the soundbar and then I can connect the volume and power with the same controller this is so cool because only one I only need one controller for sound and also for the Amazon Fire Stick and also for the projector so let's go here in general. So this is a system version 1.91, which is the latest one. You can also update via USB, but you don't need to. You can actually check for updates here, version update. So it's connecting your system, it's up to date, no updates available at the moment. So this is nice. Once you connect this projector to your Wi-Fi, you get that. You can change the name, motion detection. So this is the uh, little motion detectors that it has in the next to the projector lens I showed you earlier in the video. It will shut down the projector if someone gets close to it because it does get really bright. You don't want to damage your eyes. But I turned it off because I 
I don't, you know, I don't really mind. I don't have any kids or anything here. Like go to the projector, or play around with it. But if you do, or you have, if you have pets, this is a good option. Notification setting, I have it off. Input method, remote controller, lock screen, sleep, time form, time zones. I have to actually adjust the time zone. Language about factory reset, and that's it. You also have the option for Bluetooth connectivity. So if you want, if you have a Bluetooth speaker and you want to use that instead, you can do that as well. Let's go to others right here. Boot tutorial, help. Oh no, that's it. So that's it is very simple but uh what can i say guys i mainly use this for to watch movies and let me let me tell you it is fantastic you're going to love this i'm not kidding you're going to love this projector so it sells for what 27 2800 which it, it is kind of pricey but if you compare it to other brands to other projectors this is probably one of the most affordable ones there's also the xiaomi which uh, I did a comparison in a review video on that. If you're interested in that, I compared with this projector and talked about the, the, the differences and everything. So check that out as well. I want to test some other ones. I also tested the LG uh, HU85LA, which is another awesome projector. So if you want to see that video, how it works, but keep in mind that projector sells for around $6,000. So this Vava, $2,800, I think is worth every penny. And one more thing, you can also go 150 inch without losing any uh, details or any brightness. The picture quality, it, it will maintain the picture quality up to 150 inches big. So to me, trust me, 100 inch looks excellent in this room. So that's about it that's that's my review of this projector let me know what you guys think about this thank you so much for stopping by guys i'm jolster and i'll see you guys in the next one jolster out